most of particle physics is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be just remembering some definitions of things, remembering how different quarks go together, remembering different uh, definitions of the forces, etc. But when it gets hard is when you actually need to apply some of the other topics. So you need to apply the maths from your circular motion topic and you need to apply the, uh, the maths from your fields topic. So actually doing both of these at once, that makes it quite a difficult topic and there can be some pretty difficult questions that come up in the particle physics. So let's begin by applying some of the maths in the circular motion topic then. Uh, the first thing to remember, if an object is moving in a circle, well, obviously, there is a centripetal force into the centre of that circle, and you know that from the GCSE. Uh, it covers 2 pi radians in its time period, and this symbol, omega, is the angular velocity, and that's defined as the angle it covers in any given time. So the angular velocity is going to be 2 pi over the time period then that relationship as well is linked to the velocity of any object going around a circle by v is r times the angular velocity. So another equation that you need to apply from the circular motion is the equation for any centripetal force is mv squared over r. We say the centripetal force is proportional to the mass to v squared and to 1 over r and you can determine that all experimentally. Now actually then we can actually input this um, expression here for v into the equation instead of v there. So that gives us a new equation for force m r omega squared over r. Expand that out and do a bit of cancelling and you get m r omega squared. Useful expression to know. So it's worth just remembering that um, you can always apply any circular motion equation to either accelerating or detecting the particle. Hopefully now you can see why f needs to increase as the, the energy in the particle increases and also why it gets much more difficult to increase that f when we get up to what's called relativistic speeds and at relativistic speeds then the mass of the particle starts to increase so anywhere near the speed of light m increases as well as v so you actually get a much larger increase in the force the centripetal force needed to deflect it around that circle yeah, I think students sometimes get a little bit stumped when they, they think they don't have enough um, information to work out the velocity of the particle and actually they've got they've been given like the time period, let's say, and the radius and the, they actually have to work through angular velocity to get to the actual linear velocity. So that centripetal force is obviously coming because of the magnetic field. So you need to know how to apply your magnetic field rules and the the, the basic principle is the left hand rule. Okay, the, the first finger is going to be the field, that's B, magnetic field, it's a symbol B. Uh, the thumb is the force, and this, the second finger, is the current. So, actually, what we say is the force in the magnetic field is the magnetic field strength times the charge on the particle time, times the speed it's moving. So think about that. Well, actually, this is not really the current. It's not a current in the traditional sense of uh, things flowing through a conductor. It's, it's a charge which is moving at a certain speed, and that's going to be proportional to current. And you might remember that from your I nave. And yeah, you, you'll know from your transport equation that that um, QV is going to be proportional to current. And actually, that can be substituted in this equation for I L current times the length. Okay, so well that um, force due to the magnetic field on the moving particle is a centripetal force, isn't it? It's going to make it turn in a, in a circle. So we can actually equate that to our equation for centripetal force. So we end up with m v squared over r is equal to b q v, and this is actually rearranged and cancelled down into a um, more useful equation with the momentum. So actually, let's just go through that quickly. 
So obviously one of the V's cancel, so it becomes MV equals RBQ, and then just you want an equation for R. Well, that's P, isn't it? MV is P, momentum over BQ equals R. So you actually get given this one, but it's useful just to see where that comes from. This is going to be one of your most important relationships for particle physics.